Hello, my name is Jonathan Cuthbert, and I'm a technical marketing engineer in Cisco's intent-based networking group. Welcome to the second video in our multi-site remote border series. In the first video in this series, we went over terminology, the problem being solved, and various design considerations. In this video, we'll jump right into the live deployment after a quick overview of the topology. If you're not familiar with various terms for multi-site remote border, such as Anchor VN, please go back and review that first video. The live topology has a number of fabric sites, but only four are the subject of this video series. These four different fabric sites have varying sizes and deployment options. In some places, the border and control plane node are co-located, and in others, they're distributed onto different devices. There's also routers and switches doing these various roles. Why? The solution is not limited to routers or switches. Both platforms are supported. The DMZ is very unique, it does not have any connected hosts or endpoints, so there's no edge nodes. This is a completely valid option in this deployment. Finally, you can see all these sites are connected to one another. The details of that center cloud are really outside the scope of this video, but the important point is that it creates connectivity between the sites and it supports jumbo frames. In this demonstration, we'll deploy a guest VN that is anchored in our DMZ. The other three fabric sites will be the anchoring sites for this VN. And here is an idea of the packet flow. Again, guest is anchored in the DMZ and traffic for that anchor VN is tunneled to that DMZ location. The workflow is very similar to deploying any virtual network. However, there's one unique step. First thing to do is to add the virtual network to the anchor site. Remember, it can't be added to any other fabric site other than the anchor site when the workflow begins. Once you do that, you're going to select a checkbox to define this as an anchor VN or to define it as a common border control plane. Next, it's like deploying any other virtual network. Associate an IP address pool to that VN in the host onboarding screen. At that point, things are complete at the anchor site and you would move on to the anchoring sites. Again, similar steps, add the VN at the anchoring site, and then associate that IP address pool to that VN. Let's move on to the live demonstration. Here's a view of the Cisco DNA Center dashboard. It's a quick check for our version number. On the About screen, you can see we are on Cisco DNA Center 2125. If you've recently upgraded, this may look a little bit different to you as the design, policy, provision, and assurance are not across the top anymore. Instead, they've all been moved over here underneath this hamburger menu where you can see design, policy, provision, and assurance. So let me show you how to navigate over to Fabric. Go ahead and click those three bars up top, select provision, and then go to Fabric. As you can see, I have my West Coast Fabric domain already deployed and a number of transit and peer networks. Clicking here on West Coast, you can see I have a number of fabric sites already deployed as well. However, the focus of this video is remote site one, site three, site five, which is our DMZ, and site number nine. Clicking here on site five, you can see I already have a pair of border control plane nodes deployed in this location. Under host onboarding, virtual networks, you can see that there are two VNs already deployed. Let's go ahead and create and deploy the guest VN angering here in site 5, our DMZ, and then adding remote site 1, site 3, and site 9 as anchoring sites for that virtual network. To begin, we're going to add our virtual network. We'll go ahead and select guest. At this point, the workflow is very similar to deploying any VN, but this is where it deviates. When we click on guest, we have one more step that we need to do, and that is to select this checkbox. This checkbox lets Cisco DNA Center know that this particular virtual network is going to be an anchor VN, and it's going to be anchored in this site. Once we do that, you can see the anchor symbol appears. From here, the workflow is very much like deploying any other VN. We need to associate the segment so we're going to click on the virtual network. You can see this checkbox still selected, and we're going to add our segment, our IP address pool. In this case, we're going to use 
our guest network. Remember this segment, 172.16.55.0, it'll come up again. Also notice that common pool is selected and there's no option to unselect it. The traffic type here is data. And because there might be wireless users here, we'll go ahead and deploy this as a wireless pool. In just a couple clicks, we have now created our anchor VN and we have anchored it here to site five in our DMZ. Now let's add our anchoring sites. We'll begin at remote site one. And the workflow is very much the same. The first thing that we want to do is add the VN to the fabric site. As you can see, the anchor symbol appears and that when we hover over this, we can see there isn't an associated IP pool yet. That's our next step. But the VN is anchored over there in site five. We select this, we get yet another message that lets us know this virtual network has been anchored over in site five. Again, we're going to click add to associated an address pool. Notice I only have one pool to select from, and it's that same segment from earlier, 172.16.55.0. So not only has the VN been spread across these sites, the segment is the same across these sites as well. This will also be a data network and will also require wireless users. Let's continue on with the next two sites. In fabric site number three, we're going to go through the same workflow. We will add the guest VN to the fabric site. We will associate the pool. So again, we only have that one pool to choose from. And then because there are wireless users and this is data traffic, we'll go ahead and deploy that. For completeness, we'll do the same steps over here in site number nine by adding the virtual network. Again, when we hover over this, we can see that this virtual network is anchored in site number five. And again, we will associate the IP address pool and then select the applicable options. In this video, we did a demonstration of creating an anchored VN, anchor site, and three anchoring sites on a live deployment after reviewing the topology and the deployment steps summary. In our next video, we'll do a command line verification and review the output. I hope this video was useful for you, and thank you for watching.